How's it going, everyone? Logan, aka Death of Us from Green Steam Gamers. Welcome back to another video here on Green Steam Gamers. Welcome to our tour of our base on Abiotic Factor. As you guys have probably seen in a lot of our streams, we have expanded our base quite heavily, and now it's a full tour. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. And Gunnar is looking at me. Yeah, you stay over there. Thank you. So, starting with the elevator, we've actually taken over the entire cafeteria. Every area is protected by x-ray labs and laser turrets to ensure that him and any of the main creatures don't actually spawn in. We've completely taken over the office. No matter where you go, there's always dioxy healers on the crafting benches turrets around, lit up, you're pretty much safe here. Entering Noble's Kitchen, we have absolutely everything you could ever need in a kitchen. Ten convection ovens, eleven portable stoves, because, you know, we only really have one actual industrial stove here. And it's not exactly the most useful of sorts. We have all of our fridges and our battery supply of them. Kind of locked everything radioactive here in the back corner just to, you know, keep it away from everyone. Because we don't need that stuff spreading, do we? <laughs> uh, I've had enough issues with that. Leaving, we... Coming back outside, we actually have the dining room as well as... Um, yeah. I found a wall that actually fits the anomaly picture. No, yeah, there's one of our gravity cubes. <laughs> Leaving the main door, rest in peace, Jaeger. You actually enter the first main section that took the longest for me to do, set to create in the uh, world. I don't know why I'm having trouble speaking right now. I'm just dumb. <laughs> we have. All, we have, what, 65, roughly 65 large crates, weapons, tools, healing, armor, all that jazz on the one side, and the other side is all of our actual crafting supplies and base supplies. Just to ensure, you know, they're close enough to the main entrance. We've added in our crates of the collections with our symphonist crate specifically having all of the items in it but the others just having their crates and maybe a key or two our bat one of the three battery towers of the entire base one power socket connected to roughly 48 industrial batteries and then you can just wire it to wherever you need to go there's one on the left side of the storage, and one as well on the right side of the storage. Just as a failsafe, you know, you never know when you could need some batteries. <laughs> we decided to add the ramp here, that way we can actually go up and down the stairs with our vehicles and drive for stuff to the storage without needing to, you know, try and fit through these little gaps. So we just added the ramp, and it just works a little bit better than a staircase. Going up to up to this little top platform, you can see how much we've expanded the office even farther out. Absolutely everything is lit up, so we have no issues with seeing at night. We have our, our third battery tower for the base. We have so many batteries that we've made. And this one's just connected to the uh, little power socket below. We have our charging station and Oz's private bedroom in there, in the little locked room. Moving on, we've completely taken over the fountain and turned it into a drinking section that we can just refill. If anyone doesn't actually take a lead belly, 
when they join. I don't know why you wouldn't take Lead Belly if when you join, but still, it is a possibility. All the trams have been collected and marked, so we know exactly where they go to. Yeah, don't mind this. This is just specifically for the uh, lab rat that spawns here. We get sick and tired when we see him spawn in, so we just, you know, let him die to shock traps or we take his head off. Eh, one of the two. <laughs> Moving over to the security bot that spawns in the area. Yeah, this is fun. I'll show you how this works. We have these set up to ensure he doesn't actually come near us. <laughs> we have those set up at all four security bot stations on the office. Push guards. We're using the pest tra the pest teleporters as little cart stands because they actually look kind of nice for them. And we don't really need pests. You can tell a lab rat came running up here. Over in this corner, we've expanded the we've expanded the uh, garden to come over here rather than by the pool where it originally was. Just because here has a lot more space, so we can add another row of sandbags and then another row of gar garden plots on the top of it. We have every different crop. We have the water barrels with the moisture teleporters ready to go. We can add some crops up on top, on top and along the walls if we wanted. And this is Noble's private bedroom. Just because he's usually the far farmer and the uh, cook, he usually stays by either one. So he's taking over this room even though it's ice cold half the time. We don't talk about that in there. We've added in the barriers everywhere just to, you know, add some details to the base. <laughs> uh, going for that trophy. If you guys have that trophy, you know the struggle of going for it. Over here, we have the vehicle garage instead of the data farm. Let's hop right in. Originally, this was our base, so we still have everything up top there, because we, in the original streams, we took over the uh, ventilation and used that and the data farm as our actual base of operations. So we built this as well, our original variant of the uh, death trap machine. We have all nine vehicles. We're try we wanted to expand this and make it the full vehicle collection because every little spot can have a new car when the next sec sections come if they have more vehicles. But knowing that the next section is the reactors, I highly doubt there will be any new cars. Probably won't be any cars until the residences is my guess. This was our hangout originally, but we haven't really decided what to move it to yet. But we also have our collection of red chair anomalies would you like one or would you like three i don't even know why we have three it's just kind of funny to me i always hated running around here we did have the we were using this as the kitchen but we needed more space hence why we moved to the cafeteria garden was up here but we also, again, needed more space. So, now, for the time being, this area has just been turned into our laser supply storage. For the uh, laser machine gun and the laser katana. Just as, you know, a failsafe. We have the uh, pool, which we've... We did have turrets in here, but they kept destroying each other. So we removed the turrets, but 
with all the crafting benches, the AI can't spawn in here, so we've essentially turned this into our fishing location. Oh look, there's a fishing hotspot there. I can get some more staplers, yay! <laughs> Not that we need them. We set up this as our as our main security checkpoint. Barricades and disc turrets just to fire at the uh, wall of shock traps if anything does happen to spawn and come through. Because I need to add more workbenches into this area just to ensure you're safe. But that leads us up top to my personal bedroom. Which I just actually made yesterday. Double laser turrets and right inside the door is the x-ray lamp to ensure that, uh, you know, Gooner doesn't show up. Not really anything special Anything special in there. There's crafting bed, bed, my containers. I was thinking about adding a repair station or TV or something in here, but I really have no idea yet. Mostly I just want it for my collectible items, if we find any extra collectibles. And speaking of collectibles, that leads us to the collection. Now, people have been posting their pictures of collections, and they have, like, every single bobblehead, every little, you know, action figure from all the Portal Worlds. But I have yet to see a collection as expansive as ours. Open. Thank you. Welcome to the collection room. To start, we have a full crate of ornate keys, a full crate of porcelain keys, and a full crate of security keys. And each one also has their two on top for decoration. Yeah, let's just do that. All of the XOR figurines, the Order, the Composer, up top is the Train, and then we also grabbed a bunch of the sigils from Night Realm and threw them up on the wall. I love the sound they make, because it plays the portal sound as well as a little bit of the music if you listen closely. On this side we have all of our forklifts as well as all of the little photos you can get. And then we have the cane sword and and kite shield as well as the as well as the broadsword and the kite shield. Kite shield up top. And then we also have our singular bobbleheads here. We've gotten four copies of the gate defense bobblehead from other areas of the world. Three of the blacksmith homeboy. And then one of our best friends, the lab scientist. Oh dear. I really must use the restroom. One favorite thing to do is actually just stand here and look at the at the composers because it just looks like one's moving so fast along the table. And that is basically the end of our tour, but we have one special thing to show you and I will I will take us there right away. Hold on tight. Alrighty, so for those of you who've played the game, you'll recognize this area. Back in the live fire zone of the Cascade Lab. For those of you who haven't played or haven't gotten this far into the story yet, even though this game, even though this section was added when the game first released, uh, spoiler alert, uh, spoilers ahead for the creature we're about to face. If you don't want to spoil it, then then pause or close out the video now but for those of you who have played you guys know what this is all right if you haven't clicked away yet you're okay with the spoilers we're going this is the Tarask. and for those of you who follow oz on twitter this world has been has been run by myself osric and noble Myself, Oz, and Noble, we first fought the Tarask on stream. We were a bit confused by it. 
And then we decided, after killing it a couple of times, we wanted to see if there was a way we could, you know, kill it without doing anything. So I present to you the Tarask Destroyer. Nothing is turned on, everything's powered by the lever. That way they don't auto aggro him. But, here we go. Once he gets into another position, then... Voila! We don't have to do anything to deal with the Tarask. And we are back at base. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that has been the tour of our entire office sector taken over. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, share. Something's being shot by a shock trap, and I have a feeling I know exactly who it is. Yeah, that. Anyways. As I was saying, like, comment, subscribe, rate, share. Let me know down below what you guys what you guys think, what you guys think we should change and add to any of the rooms where we should expand to, and if you have any ideas of what we could add into different areas, let me know down below, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Peace out.